Are you captivated by Elon Musk's fearless vision to establish a human colony on Mars? A multitude of brave souls have already stepped forward, eager to join this pioneering endeavor. But before you consider becoming one of these intrepid colonizers, you must pay attention to the terrifying revelation Musk has recently shared about the Mars colonization project. What exactly did Musk disclose regarding the imminent Martian voyage? Why has it sent shivers down our spines? And what lies at the heart of Musk's true intentions for sending humans to the Red Planet? Embark with us on a thrilling exploration into Elon Musk's announcement about the forthcoming SpaceX manned mission to Mars. Delve into the challenges of colonizing the enigmatic planet and envision the extraordinary experience of life on Mars. In 1965, NASA's Marina 4 spacecraft made history with the first ever Martian flyby, but it was the Soviet Union that claimed victory in the race to the first successful landing when Mars 3 lander touched down on the Red Planet in 1971. Since then, humanity has embarked on numerous triumphant voyages to Mars, including the development of various Mars rovers. Notably, NASA's Mars Odyssey spacecraft meticulously mapped the entire Martian surface. What astonishing Martian discoveries await our exploration of the Red Planet, as it continues to advance, fueled by the competitive spirit and relentless curiosity of humankind? Fascinatingly, NASA is diligently planning a manned mission to Mars. Though Elon Musk's ambitions seem to outpace the space agency's timeline, while NASA envisions the first human landing around the middle of the next decade, Musk is determined to make it happen within this one. The space agency is still evaluating the most suitable locations for the initial human landing due to Mars's highly elliptical orbit, resulting in extreme temperature fluctuations between hemispheres. Imagine settling in Mars's northern hemisphere, where you would experience seven months of spring, six months of summer, just over five months of autumn, and a mere four months of winter. Intriguingly, the Martian year spans 1.88 Earth years and a day lasts slightly longer than 24 hours. But brace yourself for the chilling Martian climate, which makes Earth's coldest regions seem mild in comparison. With an average temperature of minus 60 degrees C, the red planet's weather is significantly colder than Antarctica, with averages between minus 10 degrees C on the coast to minus 60 degrees at the highest parts of the interior. Winter temperatures near the Martian poles can plummet to a bone-chilling minus 126 degrees C, comparable to the frigid extremes of Earth's polar vortex. Meanwhile, equatorial summers may reach a balmy 20 degrees C, akin to a pleasant spring day in New York City. Prepare for wildly fluctuating temperatures within a single week, a testament to Mars's unpredictable and extreme climate. Musk's adventurous colonizers will also need to contend with powerful dust storms, capable of engulfing the entire planet in mere days. Although these tempests might not pose a direct threat to human life, the persuasive dust could wreak havoc on electronics and hinder solar-powered instruments. Last year in December, the Hope mission to Mars powered by the United Arab Emirates got a taste of what a Mars dust storm looks like. The storm quickly advanced thousands of miles wide, passing over the crater containing NASA's Perseverance rover and Ingenuity helicopter, and lasted until January the 14th. In late December, the Hope probe began tracking the swift expansion of the regional dust storm that swelled to an astonishing size of several thousand kilometers. Mars's dust storms incite extraordinarily turbulent weather conditions. Towering up to 30 kilometers high, these storms can shroud the entire planet in their wrath. To put that in perspective, that's like stacking nearly four Mount Everests on top of each other. Viewed from space, these tempests transform Mars into a radiant deep red orb. By examining these Martian maelstroms, scientists aspire to unlock further understanding of how these storms contribute to the desiccation of the planet facilitating the escape of precious Martian water into the vast expanse of the cosmos. Could unraveling the secrets of these colossal Martian dust storms pave the way for innovative strategies to combat their impact on future Mars colonization endeavors? The colonizers venturing to Mars will confront the daunting challenge of relentless radiation from space. 
one critical distinction between Mars and Earth carries life-threatening implications. The absence of a global magnetic field and dense atmosphere to shield inhabitants from harmful radiation. Both human settlers and their equipment will be exposed to lethal doses of radiation for the duration of their stay on the Red Planet. On Mars, you'd be subjected to 30 to 60 microsieverts of radiation per hour, which is up to 220,000 times more than the minuscule 0.0027 millisieverts experienced on Earth. Prolonged exposure, even with a robust pressure suit, could lead to significant cancer risks and potential nervous system damage. The Martian atmosphere is much thinner than Earth's atmosphere, with a surface pressure of about 0.6% of Earth's atmospheric pressure. Additionally, the atmosphere of Mars is composed primarily of carbon dioxide, which is not breathable for humans. Therefore, a person would not be able to breathe on Mars without some sort of life support system or specialized equipment. Additionally, communication with Earth would present its own set of challenges. Initially, the Martian colony would rely heavily on Earth for support, but sending a message could take up to 15 minutes. In emergency situations, this delay could prove detrimental. Just imagine attempting to video chat with participants on Earth under such circumstances. Not just that, but imagine if you need something from Earth. Sending a ship from Earth to Mars is like sending your friend a text message and finally getting a response seven months later. On average, that's how long it takes to travel from Earth to Mars. Despite these hurdles, Mars offers a treasure trove of sightseeing opportunities. If Musk's vision of colonizing Mars comes to fruition, various Martian landmarks could become protected as national parks, providing awe-inspiring experiences for the settlers. Mars presents an array of unique challenges, beginning with its gravity, which is a mere 38% of Earth's. Adapting to this change would be a test for even the most agile individuals requiring them to relearn basic movements like running and performing swift actions. Landing spacecraft on the Red Planet is no laughing matter either, given its thin atmosphere. The delicate task of lowering NASA's Curiosity rover, which weighed a mere 2,000 pounds, pales in comparison to the colossal weight of Musk's Starship spacecraft. The trials don't end there, as the spacecraft must endure supersonic speeds and extreme heat while traversing the Martian atmosphere. Designing a spacecraft capable of withstanding such conditions, landing propulsively and then being refueled for a return trip to Earth, as Musk envisions, is no small feat. Musk's candor about the harsh realities of life on Mars aims to ensure that volunteers fully grasp the monumental undertaking they're committing to. With plans to establish a permanent colony of one million residents over 40 years, Musk envisions a self-sustaining settlement that doesn't rely on Earth resources. As the population grows through reproduction, the inhabitants will produce everything they need, giving rise to a distinct Martian economy. However, the ambitious vision comes at a cost. Musk acknowledges that many early settlers may pay the ultimate price, which is why SpaceX is not actively promoting the endeavor to volunteers. Contrary to the perceptions of the project as an exclusive escape for the ultra-wealthy, Musk emphasizes its dangerous and highly uncomfortable nature. Only the most tenacious and daring individuals should consider embarking on this arduous journey, as it may be a one-way ticket to an uncertain future on the Red Planet. As we weigh the risks and sacrifices associated with colonizing Mars, we must ask ourselves, is the price we pay a worthy investment for the future? Does humanity have the potential to thrive beyond Earth? Musk forewarns that once you embark on the starship destined for Mars, you may be bidding a permanent farewell to the pleasures of fine dining. The point of no return lies just beyond the moment the spacecraft ignites its engines. Should you have second thoughts upon reaching Mars, securing passage back to Earth on a starship could prove challenging, with a suitable launch window arising only once every two years. Even if you manage to return to Earth, the physical changes your body experiences may be irreversible making it difficult or even impossible to adapt back to life on our home planet. As time goes by, the reduced gravity on Mars could cause your body to atrophy and weaken significantly. Upon returning to Earth, you may find yourself unable to cope with its gravity, severely limiting your capabilities. Musk likens the Martian journey to an advertisement attributed to renowned explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton, 
who sought recruits for hazardous journeys with small wages, bitter cold, long months of darkness, constant danger and uncertain safe return, but with the promise of honour and recognition upon success. Despite the myriad challenges, Musk emphasises the exhilarating and glorious adventure that awaits those bold enough to venture forth. It's important to note that Musk's motivation transcends mere thrill-seeking for the wealthy elite. Instead, he envisions a grander purpose for this ambitious endeavour to conquer the Red Planet. If given the opportunity to journey to Mars, would you seize the chance and become a pioneer in the next frontier of human exploration, knowing the risks and sacrifices involved? Here's how Musk describes his venture. The future of humanity is fundamentally going to bifurcate along one of two directions. Either we're going to become a multi-planet species and a spacefaring civilization, or we're going to be stuck on one planet until some eventual extinction event. Throughout the years, Musk has presented compelling arguments for humanity's expansion to other celestial bodies. He frequently cites the risk of a cataclysmic event on Earth, which could bring about the end of humanity. Establishing a base on a planet like Mars would ensure our survival in the face of such potential disasters. Earth has existed for 4.5 billion years, yet life remains confined to our home planet, and the window of opportunity to become multi-planetary may be closing. From unforeseen meteor strikes to other existential threats like supervolcanoes, extreme climate change, or even global conflict, countless factors could spell doom for human civilization. However, Musk offers another, more optimistic perspective on interplanetary travel. The promise of a brighter future. Amidst the numerous challenges and uncertainties we face, venturing into the cosmos as a spacefaring civilization can inspire hope and excitement for what lies ahead. Do you agree with Musk's belief that embracing our potential as a spacefaring species can rekindle our enthusiasm for the future? Musk quotes, by now, we should have been tackling distant planets. He said, it's been almost half a century since humans were last on the moon. That's too long. We need to get back there and have a permanent base on the moon. Again, like a big permanently occupied base on the moon, and then build a city on Mars to become a spacefaring civilization, a multi-planet species. Musk isn't alone in his belief that Earth may be approaching a critical point and that establishing a backup planet is a necessity. Famed physicist Stephen Hawking also warned of impending catastrophes, suggesting that we must colonize Mars within the next century to survive the perils of climate change, diseases, and other self-inflicted crises. Undaunted by the monumental task, Musk has been diligently working with leading scientists to devise solutions. But how will a million volunteers reach Mars? The colossal journey requires specialized spacecraft, and SpaceX is developing the Starship, a fully reusable rocket with an astonishingly rapid turnaround time between launches. With a fleet of 1,000 starships, each capable of carrying over 100 people, Musk aims to create an interplanetary convoy that will advance his ambitious goal. The starships will gather in Earth's orbit, awaiting the ideal window to embark on their Martian voyage. Musk's strategy also includes using fuel produced on Mars for the return trips to Earth and even terraforming the Red Planet to make it more habitable. Though daunting, this long-term plan is consistent with the billionaire's penchant for setting visionary goals. The terraforming process might involve a controversial method, dropping nuclear bombs on Mars's poles. The explosions would vaporize the ice caps, releasing massive amounts of water vapor and CO2 into the atmosphere, triggering a runaway greenhouse effect. While we're working to curb the greenhouse effect on Earth, it's precisely what Mars needs to become habitable. As temperatures rise due to the released greenhouse gases, Martian rocks would heat up, producing more CO2, further warming the planet and releasing even more CO2. This cycle would eventually lead to a more Earth-like climate, with a thicker atmosphere and the potential for liquid water. All Musk would need to complete the transformation is to introduce oxygen-producing plants, paving the way for a new Earth-like world. But can Musk's vision of transforming Mars into a second Earth truly become a reality, or will the challenges prove insurmountable? Intriguingly, there's an alternative approach to terraforming Mars, 
that doesn't involve dropping nuclear bombs, and it's quite fascinating. Picture constructing a colossal satellite that generates a potent magnetic field and placing it in a unique orbit, ensuring it stays between Mars and the Sun at all times. This special orbit, known as a Lagrange point, is similar to the position of the James Webb Space Telescope. From there, the satellite would emit a magnetic field strong enough to deflect solar wind, creating a shadow of reduced radiation cast over Mars. This satellite would require solar panels and a high-powered cooled superconducting magnet, products not unfamiliar to Musk's other company, Tesla. SpaceX Starship could launch the satellite into space in segments, where it would then be assembled. Simulations reveal that the atmosphere would begin to transform, with volcanic outgassing thickening and warming the atmosphere, in turn causing frozen CO2 in the ice caps to slightly melt. However, Mars would still lack sufficient carbon to achieve an Earth-like environment. The solution? Look to the neighboring asteroid belt, abundant with frozen CO2 potent greenhouse gases like ammonia and water ice. By intentionally crashing these asteroids into Mars, the atmosphere would thicken enough for colonizers to forgo pressure suits. The added greenhouse gases would raise the temperature to comfortable levels, and the melted water ice would replenish Mars's ancient seas in warmer climates. But is this ambitious plan truly achievable? There's no doubt that Musk's plan has some details to iron out and he might need to devise entirely new technology. But it remains a potential solution. So, if you're contemplating joining the ranks of early volunteers for Musk's Mars mission, what might your future living quarters look like? Musk envisions that the initial stage might involve inhabitants residing in glass dome structures before the planet is fully terraformed. According to the SpaceX CEO, using glass panes and carbon fiber frames, geodesic domes could be constructed on the Marshall surface, while mining droids could create pressurized underground caves for industrial operations. The primary objective is for the colony to achieve self-sufficiency rapidly, as support from Earth could be severed at any moment. The initial missions to Mars would focus on transporting equipment to establish refueling infrastructure on the planet. The colonizers would initially reside in the starships, but NASA has also held a competition for Mars habitat designs, yielding intriguing entries. If successful, volunteers might find themselves living in one of these innovative habitats. Are you excited about Musk's grand vision for colonizing Mars? Do you think you could adapt to life in one of these innovative Martian habitats? And if so, what aspects of the experience excites or scares you the most?